G'day everyone. Welcome to Animal Tales with Tim Faulkner. That's me. Today, I'm talking one of my favorite all-time small marsupials, bandicoots. Bandicoots are a small marsupial native to Australia. They fall within the critical weight range, and that means many bandicoot species are threatened with extinction. There are multiple species of bandicoot throughout Australia, some doing better than others. One I'd like to talk about is found in and around where Aussie Ark is, the Barrington Tops, and it's the Northern Brown Bandicoot. Northern Brown Bandicoots are found from just north of Sydney at the Hawkesbury River. Now that river is a divide. To the south of it, you get the Southern Brown Bandicoot. To the north of it, you get the Northern Brown Bandicoot. And they go all the way up through New South Wales, up into Queensland, and around the top end. Sadly, throughout much of their southern range in New South Wales, their populations are in steep decline. They fall victim to the feral fox and feral cat. They also suffer from urban sprawl, habitat destruction, and so many other factors. But the feral fox and the feral cat are their major threat. Now let's take a look at bandicoots. I love them because they are quirky. They are full of character. Now, critical weight range means that you weigh between 500 grams and five kilos. That's a bandicoot. Now, let's start with their head. A bandicoot's are omnivorous, okay? And that little mouth of theirs is full of sharp teeth. They'll eat and dig for grubs and beetles and insects. So they've got sharp little teeth. Now, their eyesight is reasonable. It's not great and it's not bad. They've got a really good sense of smell and those little positioned ears are great for hearing, a really good sense of hearing. They utilize a really basic camouflage. Their body is brown, fawn, and it blends in with the environment. They're nocturnal. So throughout the day times, they're hidden in their little nest. But at night they emerge and that brown fawn coloration blends them in with the environment. They've got a stumpy little tail. It's not used for much, and in an evolutionary sense, they're probably losing it. And in another million years, the tail will be even shorter. Their front hands are very similar to ours with little claws, and they use them quite well to pick up food, dig and scratch. Their back feet look more similar to a macropod or a kangaroo. They're quite long and elongated, and at times, they actually almost hop like a kangaroo. Now, both the northern and southern brown bandicoots live typically in coastal areas east of the Great Dividing Range. And that means they're in the temperate forests, the grasslands, and the coastal fringes. Typically, through the daytime, they sleep in a nest by themselves, they're rather solitary. And at night, they emerge to dig. Now, this digging behavior is very important, and it's why bandicoots are considered an ecosystem terrestrial engineer. Did you know that one bandicoot can dig and turn over an elephant's worth of dirt each year. Now think about that. Not only are they searching for food and keeping the numbers of grubs and beetles and insects in check, but whilst they're turning that dirt over, they're aerating and oxygenating the soil. They're turning leaf litter into dirt and helping with decomposition. And that can reduce fire load by having less fire load on the ground because bandicoots are turning it into dirt. And lastly, they spread seeds. Plants drop their seeds, they hit the ground, and the bandicoots essentially bury them. They are an essential part of the ecosystem. Bandicoots make numerous sounds. Some are little eh, eh, some little growls, some squeaks, but they stay in contact with each other. Now, when they're out foraging, they're in quite dense bush. And an easy way of knowing where your neighbor is, or your mate is, or your joeys are, is to be vocal and talk to each other. And I love those little sounds. When it comes into breeding season, what you'll typically have is a male with a territory, a, a slightly larger territory than the females, and female territories overlap the male's territories. And a, a big, strong, healthy male will actually mate with multiple females. A bandicoots have one of the shortest pregnancies of any mammal or marsupial on Earth. Some as little as 11 days. So you can imagine the joeys are born really small and there could be six in the pouch at any one time. So mum and dad mate, the joeys are born, they climb from the cloaca up into the pouch 
and the first six get onto the teats. Now those joeys grow and develop so quickly and within only a couple of months, they're independent and well before they're a year old, they can breed themselves. Aussie Ark works with two species of bandicoot, the long nose bandicoot and the northern brown bandicoot. Now throughout much of Australia, bandicoots are in peril. Their populations are in decline. I mentioned earlier, that's overwhelmingly because of the feral fox and the feral cat. Now, what can we do about that? Well, at the moment, we don't have a solution to deal with the fox and cat. Aussie Ark's solution is to fence in large swathes of land. The bandicoots can roam free and wild like they did. And what we control is the threat of fire, is the threat of feral pest, is the threat of invasive weeds. By controlling them, we can have thousands of bandicoots in a habitat that they once called home. Two bits of homework for today. There are a range of different species of bandicoots in Australia. Can you please research and name them all for me? Now, I want you to note some species have sadly gone extinct. Some are critically endangered, some are endangered. I'd like you to list not just the species, but also those that have gone extinct and those that are endangered and critically endangered. And next, and for a bit of fun, please draw me a bandicoot life cycle. A male and female in the forest, a female that gives birth to a joeys, the joeys growing up, and the joeys becoming adults and breeding themselves. Now that's all for today. See you next time. Thanks for watching everyone. Now the keepers and I are looking after all of our animals and our families, but we all have a bit of extra time at the moment, like you probably do too. So this is a great distraction for us, and hopefully you. Uh, if you like what you've seen or want to show me your homework, just put it into the comments. But this is what I do, connecting people with nature, and that can't stop. I'll see you next time.